Hello everyone, it's Rhonda here from Nelson Soapery. Today let's get going and we'll start to make something fun today. I know I did say this video was going to be a coconut soap, but I've decided because since I'm running out of bath products, I really need to get going on them. So today what I'm going to be doing is making some beautiful rose snowballs. So I'm going to be using uh, two fragrances in it and I'll show you everything as I'm going along. Um, so then that way you can see exactly what I'm doing and hopefully you can follow along. So I'll do it nice and easy. I do have my scale to the side so we can measure everything up and I will give you the full recipe as we go along. So make sure you just watch the video um, and I'll give you all the tips and tricks and of course all the ingredients um, that you need as we go along. So I'll just say the ingredients and that way you'll know exactly what we are doing. You can swap some things if you like for different oils but if you want that luxurious uh, beautiful feel I suggest that you keep to these oils but I do know that things like um, jojoba oil which I use is much more expensive um, than sweet almond and so on so you can definitely swap that just for a sweet almond or another oil if you like. So anyway, let's get started and I'll show you exactly what we're going to do. So first of all, let me show you. This is my most popular candle, which is my rose one. So we're going to do a similar thing to this and we are going to put some beautiful fruity rose petals in it as well. So to get started, the first thing you need to do obviously is have a sanitized environment and I am going to put gloves on before I touch anything else. And in here, I do have my uh, bowl and everything has been sanitized and so on. So I'm going to pop the camera down and then we will go um, and show you exactly what we're going to do. So just follow along and let's have some fun, everybody. And for anyone that's new to soap making, I just wanted to say this little bit. I have lots and lots of... Um, private messages where people say oh I'm really overwhelmed I want to do this but I just don't feel I can do it so you can do it you definitely can it takes time and I just want everyone to know that you know I didn't learn this overnight it took you know honestly took me a long time a number of years to learn all these things so don't feel so overwhelmed just have a go just even when I give you the recipe if you want you can halve that recipe or quarter that recipe and that way have a go at a much smaller recipe um, just for yourself at home and see how you go and if you like it and it works then maybe then you'll feel more comfortable to do a bigger recipe and um, get going so most of my recipes here I double and quadruple depending on how much um, I actually want to make so this one is a larger one so you can definitely um, halve this as well but anyway like I said I'll pop the camera down and let's get started all right everyone I'm back again so you can see on here I do have my glass bowl that is sanitized my little gloves on of course and um, then of course in here I do have my sifter so you need one of these because we want to put all the bicarb and so on through this now during this um, video, I am actually going to be doing a little bit of a voiceover in a minute once I start doing um, these particular powdered things. When you're using any powders, you really need to wear a mask. It is really dangerous and um, that's when terrible things can happen later on in life after you've used powders and they get in your lungs and so on. So don't be scared of it, but just make sure that you respect it and use the right equipment. So. So here, this is my little mask I will be wearing. So I'll be popping that on in just a moment before I do it. And like I said, then I will do a quick voiceover for you, um, just of the powdered things, and then I'll come back and I'll just freely talk as we go along. So anyway, let's start putting in our bicarb first. And then of course, we'll go to things like SLSA and so on. So you'll see me going back and forward off the camera to put them in, but I'm sure you won't mind because be behind me at the back, um, I do have dozens and dozens of different um, powders and clays and so on. But like I said, I will definitely give you, um, you know, the recipe. So don't worry about that. But anyway, let's get going. I'll pop my mask on and we'll start to make this. Now let's get on to the powdered part of um, the uh, recipe. So this is called, is called the dry ingredients. All powders in a recipe are called the dry ones. And for here, we're going to be using an American grade bicarbonate soda. I actually get mine from Heirloom in Australia. And we're going to be adding in 750 grams of bicarbonate soda. Make sure you have a little bit extra left um, in your bag. So make sure you do have a little bit more than the 750 because we may have actually have to 
to add some later if your recipe is too wet you can always add a little bit more in and that way it will fix up any of those um, problems like I said if it's too wet but I know this recipe will work out fine I have tested this one as well but anyway like I said we'll put it through the sifter here and we're just going to make sure that we get any of the impurities or the hard bits out any hard bits that are left in the sifter just throw them in the bin as long as it's not a massive amount it will only be a few granules left at the bottom and next we need to grab our citric acid so in here we are going to be adding in 200 grams of citric acid and once again the same thing make sure you sift it through the sifter and just pop it into the bowl and making sure you're weighing it and the ingredients are exactly don't go over or under because um, this recipe does need the exact ingredients um, to make it work really well uh, to make the bar harder as well or these bubbles um, bars harder we actually need to add in 115 grams of cream of tartar and I know it's not a bubble bar I accidentally said that it is actually a snowball but it's a very similar thing to a bubble bar and um, the only difference is this one will foam a little bit more and just have more of a relaxing property in it and next we're going to be adding in SLSA. We're going to be adding in 300 grams of SLSA. If you don't want to add this product, you don't have to, but you might want to um, pop um, some more you know, baking soda in instead of um, your SLSA. But the SLSA is needed to create the foaming in the bath as well. And that's what lots of people want. So um, anyway, that's what we're going to be adding in here and it's going to be looking absolutely beautiful and then all we're going to be doing of course is we need to come in here and sift all of it through there making sure you've got your mask on because SLSA is really airborne and you will see all the little powders fly up in the air and um, if you've noticed I actually step back a distance from there and stretch my arms out because I don't want to get too close if this stuff gets um, into your lungs it will really irritate you and you'll just cough and cough and cough and it's your body's um, defense to try and cough it out so that's why you cough because it's an irritation to the lungs so like I said just respect um, this part of the process and make sure you're wearing the mask and make sure all your children um, and pets are out of the room because it can also irritate them so um, I always make sure all my children are out of the room and my little uh, poodles that you often see in my photos um, they are not in the room when I make anything so um, that way I know that they're fine but anyway like I said keep mixing all of this and just sifting it through I should say into the bowl and then once we've done this part we'll get on to the liquid ingredients um, of it as well everyone I'm back now I've taken off the mask so as you would have noticed in the other bit when you just see me popping all of this in it is really really airborne and the reason that you'll cough with SLSA is it's your lungs way of trying to get that powder out because it's irritating your lungs so it is um, you know really dangerous stuff if you're close and you would have seen that I basically try and stand back with my hand doing this because that way I'm not close either so you know like I said it's fine as long as you wear a mask and you respect it so now what I'm also going to do I thought I'll come back to the camera and show you this is I'm also going to add in some milk powder in mine if you don't want the milk powder you don't need to add it in but I like to put goats uh, milk powder in a lot of mine I just get this from my local chemist um, there are other places where you can buy much in much bigger bulk but um, I usually only put in a small amount not too much of an amount anyway so I'm going to put 50 grams here um, of my goat's milk so and like I said this is just a powder form but you can leave this out if you want if you leave this out um, you do need to pop something else in instead because obviously then you're losing your powder form so just put some bicarb or something in if you don't want to and then I'm also just going to be putting in some normal milk powder as well but with normal milk powder it can get a little bit um a little bit clumpy so usually I just put it back through this so let me just and we want 50 grams of this as well so it should be equaling 100 grams all together of your milk powders but like I said you know you can actually you know change a little bit a little bit of this as well so um, you know change it to yourself 
So often what happens is sopers will get a basic recipe and then they'll change it to suit their own business. So, and then that's why they um, don't like to give a lot of recipes away because they might have done a lot of research on it. Um, myself, I don't mind. Honestly, I don't mind if someone uses any of my recipes at all. So, you know, have a go everybody. Anyway, so I just put the lids on those because I've got them sitting here to the side of the bench. So then I know that I have definitely done all of that. And now we've done this. So now what we're going to do, pop this aside while we start to organize the wet ingredients. So I'll just pop this aside. And honestly, it's not that much of a deal. I mean, I could just pour the wet ingredients into this if I wanted. But usually what I do is I try and set them up aside. So I thought I'll show you this. So in here is the beautiful um, butters. So in my recipe, I mean, I love adding shea butter in everything. I, most of my recipes have shea butter and it's always unrefined. So in here I have some unrefined shea butter and I also have some cocoa butter. The only thing with my cocoa butter is mine comes in a massive big block. I know you can get it in pallets, but I just haven't bought it that way because it's much more expensive. But another way is you can get your cocoa butter, melt it all down and then just put it in ice cube containers and pop them out. So that way you can just have little bits. But I haven't got round to that. I've literally used a grater and grated most of this besides little bits like this that I've managed to pull off. So in here, the cocoa butter that we have is 130 grams. And then the shea butter, which is at the bottom of this, um, shea butter um, is 170 grams. And what this will do is when somebody has a bath in this, it will leave a beautiful, luxurious, skin-loving kind of feel on your skin. Um, of course, as soap makers, we're not allowed to say that it's going to improve anything or do anything, and I would never do that. But for myself, I have used this recipe and it is absolutely beautiful. It just feels so, so nice um, on your skin. So obviously with this, you need to melt it down. I'm going to be lazy and I'm going to be popping this in a microwave. But honestly, I do suggest you put this in a double boiler because it would definitely be much better. Make sure that the dish you've got in this is a Pyrex, that it is um, microwave safe. Some of them are not and some of them will get really, really hot. So... And two, you've got to remember that your cocoa butter and your shea butter have totally different melting points, as does coconut oil and so on. So sometimes it is better to separate them into separate jugs, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to randomly do bursts and then I'm going to mix it up and then keep going in the microwave. So it's not, don't just leave it on for four minutes because you will burn it and then it will really smell horrible. So anyway, I'm going to do this bit and then I will come back and I'll show you the next bit and what we're going to be popping into this. So let me just melt this down and like I said, I'll be back in a moment. All right, everyone, I'm back again. So what I've actually done is inside here is my cocoa butter that I've melted. I just kept the tin on. If you keep on some aluminium foil or some tin, um, what actually happens is it just keeps the heat in. So that, that's the reason why I did that. And I decided I didn't end up doing it in the microwave. I took it inside um, because inside my studio here, I actually don't have a stove. I just have an electric little, um, you know, sort of portable, I guess, stove top. But I ended up taking it into the house and the house is not connected to the studio. The studio sits on its own. Uh, so I had to go another 20 minutes inside and do all of this. But anyway, it's melted down now. So like I said, this is the shea and the cocoa butter that we were talking about before. And now what we're going to do inside this container, why it's still warm, we're going to be adding in all of our other ingredients. Um, and so this is going to be the wet part of the ingredients as well. Because we're using all oils, we actually don't need to have a preservative. Um, preservatives you do need to if you're adding any waters and so on, but we're not doing that. So this one is fine to do that. And honestly, I try and stick to oil-based things so I don't have to use a preservative. Um, when I did uh, do a few questions on people that have uh, bought things from me, that's the one thing they said they didn't want. They actually don't like the preservatives. So, but you know, if you need a preservative in something, you definitely have to add it. So, um, but that all will go with your business, won't it? Depending on what you sort of want. So anyway, let's get going. And like I said, we'll do the next bit. I just had to find my little recipe to the side um, that I've done. So from here, what we're going to do is we'll add in the fragrances. So I'm going to be using, um, this one's called, it's a blonde wood and cashmere. So this is the one I'm going to be using and it's from Pure Candle Supplies. So I'm going to just tear out my scale here. 
Might have to turn it off and turn it back on again. Um, and I'm going to just add 20. When adding fragrances, go and look on your supplier's websites to what you can use. I see lots of people using 10% or more, but in Australia, uh, most body products can only be about 5%. Um, so I'm going to be adding in 20, which is less than 5%. So I'm adding in 20 of that and then I'm going to be adding in 20 of this particular one which is called a dozen roses as well. And with the combined two, I think it comes to about 4.5% of the recipe which is fine. But yeah, do make sure that you're, you know, like I said, just, you know, go off the, the right measurements um, that you're doing. So I'm going to pop those aside. We'll just make sure this has got a little bit of a mix. We'll give this a bit of a mix, won't we? So now I do have my uh, jojoba oil that I wanted to add into this recipe. And I'm just going to be adding in 10 grams of this. So I'll carefully add this in. Yep, yeah, so, and you know, make sure that you're really careful. If you're worried you'll make a mistake, then just do them in separate containers and add them all in at the end. But because I make so much, I'm pretty right on what I do. Sometimes I'm, I'm not, but generally I am. And then we need some polysorbate 80. And for those of you that are wondering why is she using this, I'm actually using this because it will disperse the mica that I'm going to be putting in later. Um, and so there's different polysorbates, but um, so this one is called um, poly polysorbate 80 and this is the one you need to disperse the oils, which basically means it won't leave a ring around the tub um, and your customers won't love you for that. Believe me, they won't because I've had people complain um, about things like that. That's one thing they've said about other soap makers that they've bought from and they've changed over to me. Um, and, you know, it might not be the soap maker's fault. It might just be a little mistake they've made because that happens too. Sometimes, you know, I'm not perfect. Gosh, sometimes you, you think, oh, no, I've forgotten the poly sorbet. But, you know, then it's a bit of a problem. Either you can sell it without it and explain, but most people will still complain. So, um, yeah, do sort of think of that. And then the glycerin, we're going to be adding in 25 grams of this. And this is a product that some people are allergic to. So you need to make sure this is really clearly labelled. All right, so we've got that in there and now this is all looking gorgeous. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to take this off the scale. We're going to be putting um, our powders and then we're going to mix it all together and then I will separate it into jugs and we'll get um, our micas and everything else ready. So let me just pop this aside. And the, oh, the only one thing I forgot before, which let me just add this in first, is I'm going to be adding in some pink French clay. And I'm just going to be adding in one tablespoon of that. So this is only a half, so we'll put two because that will make one tablespoon of that. And it will add a really light pinky kind of colour as well. And I will just put all of these away before we get up to the next step. So keeping it nice and clean. And I do try and, um, you know, I really do try and make sure it's as neat as I possibly can because, you know, we're dealing with people and health, aren't we? So uh, really important. And make sure everything you're using is totally and utterly sanitised. It's really, really, really important. So even all the tools that I'm using, everything. Um, your containers, you need to wipe them down regularly as well. So let me pop down this camera a little bit more so you can see. So here you go, let me... There, that's better so in here we do have everything and then like i said we also have this in here so i'm going to mix this whole thing up and then like i said we're going to change the colors so let me just pop this one in here and then i will just get my spatula One thing I forgot to sanitise was this, so we'll just quickly do this. If you're forgetting to sanitise something during the middle, just stop and um, all you've got to do is just get some rubbing alcohol, spray it on there, wipe it out with paper towel, making sure everything is really, really clean. And because we do need this scoop later, remember? So 
let me pop this one aside and like I said we've sanitized all this and now we're just going to mix all this in uh, to when you're um, if you're using like the cocoa butter like I said and the shea butter that I use in this one here don't just leave it there because the cocoa butter um, will set up quite fast so it it will solidify and go hard and then your whole recipe is kind of ruined isn't it so um, yeah it's really important to add all these things in and then we're going to mix it up it's going to be like a big cake is what it kind of reminds me of doing this part um, and remember to do it slowly because we do have SLSA in there and that will irritate your lungs. So you want that to be a little bit wet. And it should feel like kind of like cake dough. So, you know, if you've got like a KitchenAid or um, a mixer, you can mix it. But And I do have proper mixers that are only ever dedicated to soap products. But I thought for this purpose, I'll do it this way because I'm thinking most of you probably won't have um, you know a dedicated mixer just for soap products so it's nice for me to show you exactly you know how you can do this by hand and you know not to panic you don't need a machine and also if you're putting these products in your KitchenAid you cannot use that for food again you really do need to just keep it um, you know just keep it for the soap products because you know you don't want to be sick do you from eating out of all these things with the soaps and whatever else we put in here so let me show you now so it should be kind of sticky like this and if you see actually not sticky but um squishy but if you have a look there's not much on my hands and that's what you want if it's really wet and gooey add a little bit more bicarb in there so anyway let me get my containers that i've got to the side here and then i will come back and we'll actually separate in the colours so that way we can add the colours in and then do something fun next. All right, so let's just mix all of this up. So we're just going to put some in here, some in this one. So we want to have our three colours. And just do however you think, you know, however you want it. You can do it all one colour if you want to. And then I'm just going to add a tiny bit of each of these. So I've got this beautiful blazing red and um, remember not to do it too crazy because you know your customers might not like it too crazy and then I've got this beautiful burgundy kind of shimmery color hopefully you can see how gorgeous that is and I'm going to pop that one in here and this last one I'm going to leave but I am going to be adding in this gorgeous mica if you can see that uh, sorry, not mica. What am I saying? So I'm crazy today. Um, this is a biogradable to glitter, glitter. So biodegradable. So if you can see that. And that is from Sud Off in Australia. And I think that's like that dazzling sort of pinky one. And it will just add a bit of shimmer to it. And you'll see what I'm going to do in a minute. I'm just going to add all these together. And um, let me see if you can if you can see the sort of glitter in there. Maybe it doesn't show it very good, but it's really lovely anyway. And then all you're going to do is mix this up by hand. Once again, do remember what I said before. Don't just leave anything because if you leave it, the cocoa butter is going to set up. And if you feel this is too dry, um, you can add a tiny bit of glycerin into it. But honestly, uh, what this is now is perfect. I definitely wouldn't be adding it in. If your hands get too, like sort of um messy as well just change your gloves like i've already changed my gloves when i'm doing these or bubble bars um i always change my gloves at least twice because you just get all these crazy colors all over the place but let me show you how gorgeous this color is i mean it's just oh darling and the smell is beautiful so this is how it looks so we've got our two colors here so we'll pop them and then of course this is the burgundy so let's mix this one in and i can definitely feel the cocoa butter is setting this one up so we'll have to get going why not i'm mixing it up Thank you. 
So I'm going to clean my bench and then I will be back but we have our three colors and I have a star ingredient that I've forgotten to put in so let me go and grab it. All right so I do have these gorgeous little um, flowers to go in so I'm just going to pop a few in each because this will just add to the bath. If you can imagine turning the tap on and um and once this all melts in the bath and you have these beautiful rose petals floating these ones are not just from a little cheapy shop these are actually from a supplier so these are from sad off in australia and they're not hard you know when you go to a cheapy shop and sometimes you find those roses and they're hard these ones aren't they don't have like all the cores and leaves in they're actually the fruity rose um, which is nice and you would have seen that I haven't put a massive amount in either so we will just mix these and I'm going to move this to the side and I'm going to put my lid on my mica because I always forget and then I tip the whole lot everywhere and um, as you can see then this bit's here and I can definitely feel these are setting up so you know you do have to work fast you can't be a bit slow <laughs> So let me just move all this to the side. All right, I'm getting my other bowl. And so then all we're going to do with this is literally we're just going to break off pieces and just throw it on top of it. So this way it will literally mix all the colours up, um, you know, for when we're going to get the, the spoon and uh, do the next bit. So this is all you do. That's nice and easy. Um, there's nothing, you know, there's no rhyme or reason to this. Believe me, I'm just literally throwing it on. Um, and it just is a way of, to get all the colours together without making, you know, muddling the colours up too much. And that's why you want these colours to be quite even. And as you can see, I'm just trying to add this in because somebody won't be happy if they just get all white or they just get all the burgundy. They might want some more of the rosy colour. Anyway, I've almost finished. So just pop that in there. That in there. And that in there. And that's it and now we're just going to get a tray so that we can pop this straight onto a tray so the only thing you need is a tray and then some um, grease proof paper because we want to pop it straight down on there so in here I have two trays so let me do this one first I've got to see which one the camera's remembering. <laughs> Isn't that silly? Um, okay, so now let me get some paper. I mean, honestly, you could probably just put it straight on the tray, but, you know, for this sake, I'll show you the right way on what we should be doing, which is this way. I mean, on the tray, you just have to scrape it off with a scraper. And so then literally all we're going to do is use um, one of these, which is just an ice cream scoop. Make sure it's a decent size. This is not a small one. It's a decent size one. And then I'm just going to show you one here for a minute. Let me pop this here. Um, all we're going to do is just go into the corner. Make sure this is quite, you know, we want this to be quite flat, don't we? Um, if it's not, just add more into it. Make it so that it's nice and flat. And, you know, so you can see like that. And then we're just literally going to pop it on the tray. So I'll show you. Obviously, turn your little scoopy handle and it will come out and it will just take its time. But look how cutie that looks. So that's our first one done. 
and like I said we're just going to keep doing this with each one you know I just try and make it so that it's a bit more smooth and we'll literally just keep popping them all on the tray you might have to you know scoop it a few times to get it out because it does take time sometimes they get a little stuck if they do give it a tap and it will come out and see so, yeah, it has come out so um, like I said you know you just sort of make it come out I take the edges off because I don't like to have those messy edges on because you got to remember later on we want to package this up you know so I always shrink wrap all of mine as well and another one is done and if this or if this starts to get too dry this is when it will get real hard as well, you know. So, but at the same time, this shouldn't be super sticky either. Um, but if you don't, um, if you don't press it in here, it will just sort of separate. So just like I said, make sure you're doing that. And you just might need to work a little faster once it's, if it's starting to set up. Which this definitely is. I mean, there's so many ways you could do this as well. I mean, you could literally um, also with this, what you could do is you could roll it out and just, um, you know, cut sort of shapes as well. So you could do like roll it out and then do like love heart ones as well. So there's so many different uh, ones that you could do. But I think these ones are really nice just to have in the bath the way they are. And then when, once these are done, I'm going to actually spray a little biodegradable glitter on them as well. And if you can see how that sort of break in there, don't worry about that. Just take it out and start again. back again so we've finished them so how many did we get to make 4 8 12 16 20 so it did make 20 and then I had a small bit about that big left um, once I finished and that will be my testing one so now to make it all beautiful at the end what I'm going to do is I've got a little bit more cocoa butter here and I'm literally just going to do a, a really tiny drizzle over the top because that way I can actually pop in some biodegradable glitter and then I'm just going to pop a rose in each one and then all we're going to do is just literally on the end of your brush i'm just going to be popping this on and once it dries then the little bit of glitter will be stuck on the top and um yeah but if you don't want to put the one rose you can actually just put the other little bits of the roses that we had left um but this will just make it look a little bit beautiful at the end won't it so anyway that's what i'm going to do with mine but you know you might find a different idea i mean you guys are all super duper clever and I'm sure that you're going to come up with some really cool ideas but as I said you know this is sort of my little thing how I decided to do mine doesn't mean I'm right it's just you know 
it's all about creative spirit isn't it so um yeah and before these are too hard is when you do need to put it in they can be a little hard so you can literally just get the end of this brush and poke that in and if you just give it a little hole on each one you'll know where you're going to pop your rose in so that's also um a little trick that you can do you could also add in a bit of color if you want to add some color into this cocoa butter but like i said i decided not to i really just wanted something to be able to um so the sprinkles got stuck on there and these like i said these are biodegradable and the thing with biodegradable is it means they actually don't stick uh on the bath so you know like if you've ever seen some of those really really annoying glitters and you, you get them and then they're stuck all over the bath i had a lady come to a bed and breakfast uh sorry that was from a bed and breakfast she owned one and she actually said to me every time someone brings these bath bombs from big companies um she said what actually happens is they stick all over the bath and i said well maybe they're not biodegradable so um and she came back to me later and said you're right they're not so so yeah so anyway so that was the problem that she had um with her little um business and she said it, it took the cleaner ages to get all the glitter off that wasn't biodegradable but then when i gave her one to try out she actually said no no now she realizes it because it, it did come off the biodegradable that just went down the tub so anyway that's a little bit of probably useless information isn't it but you know i thought well i'll explain that because a lot of people actually don't know and i didn't know all these things either until i started doing it you just learn so much so hopefully i've taught all of you guys something today and i will give you uh like i always do a bit of a snapshot at the end of what this looks like and check out the description box at the bottom i'll have all the links for when i where i get everything from as well um, and i don't get paid for any of those links just so that you know um on any of these videos like I, it's just to to sort of help you guys out a bit um so anyway that's basically um what i'm trying to do is just help you out so that you can all have a little go um and so on but anyway let me do this bit here and then we are done like i said i'll come back in this in the after look at that when i broke it didn't i so you do have to be a bit gentle um but that one there i might give that to my daughter she will love it if ever I break one, I just give it to my daughter or a friend. Or sometimes I even pop it in as just a sample for someone. Um, but when you're doing that, always write on the label, sample only. So um, that way people know they're not allowed to sell it or anything, you know, crazy like that. But anyway, hopefully you love it. And like I said, I'll come back with the after shot. You go everyone just a last little shot that i thought that you might like i've also added in some little maroon kind of uh drizzle and all that is is some jojoba oil mixed with a little bit of mica and i've just drizzled it over the top just to make it look absolutely beautiful so anyway hopefully you guys all love it i think it's come up super cute uh, make sure you give me a thumbs up if you feel that it's worthy of course and um, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't to our gorgeous, sweet little channel. Bye for now.